Hey folks! I am back again with the fifth video of my work in progress series. This time it is all about engines. I started with the fan cases. Zvezda did not such a great job here. I do not understand why they give us two halves instead of one piece. It just creates unnecessary work and fit issues. The intake ring was glued to the fan case for a better inside fit. If the fit is not that good later with the whole engine assembly, it is easier to sand. I always try to avoid sanding in circular constructions. As you can see the video is the longest so far. The reason is, for engines I had to complete all steps, including weathering and clear coating. These steps were missing on the airframe so far. Next up were the Rolls-Royce fans. I started with the fan spinner. Since my registration of choice is 4 X-Ray Echo Bravo Victor, I browsed tons of pictures and I discovered that LL used two different engines on this aircraft, probably one was exchanged at some point. It is very uncommon that there is no white spinner on the cone. Instead the cone is metal only or at least some protection coating. One looks more or less orange gold and the other one a bit more greenish. I tried to replicate this by mixing chrome with some orange and yellow color. For the second engine I added some green. Results were absolutely satisfying. Shortly after that, I also painted the turbine exhaust section in super silver and did some weathering on it. Sadly there won't be a lot to see with the finished model, so I didn't spend too much time for this. The fan cone consists of two parts. The small inner portion looks like a dark metal tone. I had to mask the upper portion and I used the shadow circle cutter for this. It is quicker than doing it with the plotter. If you are good in math you could calculate the exact radius. Problem is, the scale on the circular cutter is so unprecise, it doesn't make any sense to go for a math approach. Instead I decided to trial an error and after three times I had the almost exact radius and was able to mask the upper cone.
The cone was painted in MRP steel and I took off the old mask and added a new, larger one to cover the whole cone. Actually no rocket science at all, so nothing special here. This time I sprayed the fan in chrome. I needed the fan disc to be very shiny initially, because afterwards a layer of light weathering will be sprayed on and take away the shine. This way the metallic effect remains and there is a nice realistic touch which replicates a bit of the shadow and light in a fan case. Before applying the weathering coat, I used Tomiya panel line accent color to add some three-dimensional effect to the fan blades. The following steps were quite exhausting in terms of masking. I started with the easiest part by painting the bypass ducts in silver. For the fan case the first step is the rubber ring. This ring is made of hard rubber and prevents the fan case being damaged by ice from the fan blades. Airbus 320 CFM engines have dark grey rubber, while modern engines and the RB211 have blue-greenish rubber. After checking a lot of reference material I came up with a mix of two MRP colors and painted the inner fan case. The rubber ring should have the same level as the fan.
cut some Tomiya tape to match the depth of the fan, and applied dark steel paint, representing the metal ring right before the rubber ring. Once this was done I masked these two sections and mixed silver and grey paint for the spaces between the acoustic panels. These panels are perforated panels and absorb a lot of noise. Usually you don't see the metallic effect too much, also they are often very dirty. I wanted to highlight the connections between those panels. Once painted, the masking orgy started. As you can see a lot of small stripes needed to be applied. They have to stick properly for a good reason that I will show you later. Color tone and weathering varies through the years. Very often you can see the splices in the engine. I used white aluminum for the acoustic panel. After they were painted I did some spot weathering. LL aircraft are always dirty. Unfortunately I did not record how I did the weathering. For doing this with my airbrush I mix two different types. One is a light mixture and the other is heavy. Both are made of Tomiya acrylics and consist of 10 to 20% paint and 80% thinner. Applied with high pressure it makes some really nice spots and stains of dirt. As told before the masks on the splices need to stick properly. Tomiya panel line accent color was used to highlight the separation between the acoustic panels. If the masks don't stick well, the liquid runs under the masking tape and ruins the result. A little bit of that is almost unavoidable, which you can remove with a cotton swab. I established this new technique and for my first attempt it was okay. 
Next time I would spend more time pressing the masks firmly on the surface. Other than that it worked out the way it was intended. The assembly of the main engine part was more or less uneventful. The fit is average, not the best but could be worse, quite typical for Zvezda. I glued all parts with Tomia Extra Thin. As some of you already know, I am a very lazy modeler. I use super glue as a filler. Although the stuff is harder than the Zvezda plastic, I prefer it, because you only need to fill once. I sanded it, first I started with a rough stick and went up later to a 2000 grit Tomia sponge. One thing I noticed on all Zvezda airliners is the exhaust. The plastic is always quite thick and not very sharp. As I did before on other kits, I sanded it down until the exhaust was very thin. I waited with this until the engine halves were glued together. This way the seam line gets thinned down equally.
Finally I could to some spot priming. Maybe it is time to explain a few facts about priming. Mainly primer is used as bonding layer between plastic and paint. Secondary purpose is to detect spots and areas where more sanding or filling is required. Also it seals the plastic and the filler used. For me personally the main reason for priming is to see spots that need improvement in regards of sanding and filling. I use MRP paints, and they are lacquer based. They bite into the plastic, so primer is not really needed, the bond between the surface and the paint is very strong. I save a couple of layers of primer for this. Don't forget, every layer of primer or paint blurs the details and panel lines. The coat of primer showed very good results and I could continue to rescribe many of the panel lines. As shown in previous videos, I use flexible Tomia vinyl tape for curved surfaces and Demo label tape on straight and even surfaces. Since I use superglue as a filler, it is possible to run across the seam line with a Tomia scriber. If you use putty the risk is high that some putty chips off and you end up with little holes. Also I have seen some YouTube modelers rescribing panel lines in the worst possible way. If you use a lot of pressure the scribed line will be way deeper and thicker than the original. That's not the purpose of rescribing. If you have a new blade installed, just let it run from the intact panel line across the rescribing area until you reach the other end. No pressure is needed at all, that's a promise. Just let it easily run along the tape without force. Do this two or three times and have a look. Your rescribed panel line will look identical to the original ones. Let's paint the engines. I used the good old trusty MRP004. As usual by applying very thin layers. It took a while, but not hosing down the paint helps to preserve the details. Also the finish is satin and there is no orange peel. The next step were the decals. LL does not have any airline or Rolls-Royce logo on their engines. Only a few maintenance stencils. Zvezda provides a few of them, the rest was added from other decal leftovers. As you would expect, the next step is clear coating. By the way, one of the greatest myths of modeling, sealing the model before decaling. Complete nonsense, never did it and will never do it, simply doesn't make any sense and has been proven by many others as well. 
So, don't waste your clear coat on this, unless you want more blurry details. For this I used the semi-glass clear. LL aircraft spend a lot of time in the sun and very often the finish looks dull and not too shiny. Semi-glass represents this quite well. The decal sticks out a little bit and they were leveled with a sanding sponge. Once this is done another coat of semi-glass is applied. This time it is thinned down by approximately 30% MRP leveling thinner. Finish is perfect and does not need any polishing. Masking the metal portions were uneventful and I started with the darker exhaust area with MRP steel. Once done, masking continues further and the rest was done with white aluminum.
by now the engine basically is done if it was new, ha ha. Weathering is a must. Most of the dirt can be seen at the bottom, where the fan cowls open and close and all the oils and greases gather. I checked a lot of reference pictures and initially I wanted it to be really dirty. When I did this I found it a bit too much and removed it to a certain degree. A few stains and streaks were done once again and in the end I was happy with a light weathering, also I added some streaks to the fan case with oils. Final and last step were some of the pylon screws. I used a riveting tool with two different spacings, like the real pylon has. Once this was done, I used oil paint to highlight them.
This is the final result. I took pictures because the camera could catch all the details on video. Thank you for watching and see you next time when the aircraft will be decaled and clear coated.